Okay, I just want to quickly go over <clears throat> the method that I've used to decide where to drill the holes and how far to advance the rotary table between holes. Um, let's assume, for argument's sake, that we want to drill an ice easy one, 36 holes in our, in our um, indexing plate. Uh, there are 360 degrees in a circle, so 360 divided by 36 comes to 10 degrees. So, nice and easy, there are 10 degrees uh, advance between holes on our rotary table. So we would drill the first hole at zero, we will drill the second hole at 10 degrees, we will drill the next hole at 20, the next one at 30, etc. Um, so that's nice and easy, and we can actually do that um, on, on the fly, if you like, or we can wing it um, while we're drilling the, um, drilling the holes in the table. But what happens if we want to drill uh, a series of holes that doesn't divide into 360 evenly? For example, 38. So we want to drill 38 holes in our table. 38, there you go, 30, 360 divided by 38 does not come to an even number, in fact it comes out to 9.4736 uh, with a whole lot of extra decimal places. So um, we will drill our first hole at zero, we will drill the next hole at nine degrees and in order to turn that into minutes of angle we've got to multiply it by 60. So that comes to nine degrees and uh, 28 point Four from memory uh, minutes of angle so uh, not only do we have to do the mental gymnastics of multiplying it by 60 but then we've got to round that to down to 28 um, and so we will drill the next hole at uh, 9 degrees and 28 minutes we then have to uh, work out the next one and uh, the next one is in fact 18.947 uh, from memory. So uh, we will draw the next one at 18 degrees and then we're going to multiply the, the uh, 0.94 by 60 to get our, our um, minutes. Clearly we can't do that on the fly and so um, I've just done a quick spreadsheet to, uh, to give us those answers uh, nice and easily. And this is the, uh, this is the spreadsheet. So uh, this this first row of, this first row of numbers here is in row three three by the way. So this column here is the uh, the number of the hole we want to drill. So the first one always goes at zero. So this is hole one, hole two, hole three, hole four. In in this uh, cell here, which is cell G three, um, I've put the number of holes we want to drill. In this case, thirty eight. In this cell here, which is cell B3, um, I've got a formula which is equal 360 times that number there, which is A3, divided by the number of holes we want to drill, 38. And the number of holes we want to drill is in cell G3, so we put G3 here. So 360 times 1, which is 360, divided by 38 comes to 9.4, and that's that number there. Now if we copy that formula into the next cell down, Excel is very clever and it will advance um, these numbers depending on where it is. So in this formula, in this cell here, we'd put 360 times A4, which is that number, divided by G3. And the next row down, it would give us 360 times A5, uh, divided by 38, etc. However, uh, it also will index, um, it will also increment that number there. So it would give us G3 the first time, G4 the second time, G5 the next time, and we don't want that. We want it to stay at G3. So we put a dollar symbol in there. And the dollar symbol tells Excel not to uh, index that value to leave it at the, the value in cell G3. So we now have uh, a set of numbers 
degrees and uh, and uh, decimals of a degree for each hole. Now the decimals are not much use to us, we want whole degrees. Um, so if we get rid of the decimal point, um, get rid of the values after the decimal point, um, we want we, and put those in that column here. The formula in this column is equal truncate or trunk V3. And truncate tells uh, Excel just to remove uh, all, the, all the values after the decimal point or give us the number in front of the decimal point. So uh, the formula in here is truncate B3, truncate 9.47 to get 9. And then in the, if we copy that formula into the rest of these, Excel is clever enough to say this one must be um, B4, truncate B5, truncate B6, truncate B7, etc. So that gives us the whole the uh, the number of degrees. We now want um, the value of this bit in seconds. So we want to turn uh, 9.473684. So we've got rid of that. We want to turn this bit here into uh, into minutes. So if we multiply it by 60, that'll give us uh, a number with a whole lot of decimal points. And we don't want the decimals. We want the number rounded. So Excel has a round function. And it's called round. And we want to, we want to round this number, but we want to get rid of the nine. So if we round B three minus D three, that's B three, that's D three. So this bit in here is the decimal bit that we want. Uh, we multiply it by sixty to turn it into um, into minutes of angle and then we need to tell Excel that we don't want any decimal points so we put a zero there and that formula is in that cell and that will take so what that formula does is it takes the decimal value it rounds it to a whole number and it gives us the answer with no decimal places so it's 28 minutes of angle. So uh, we then copy that formula into the rest of the cells. Excel does that uh, vanishingly quick for us. And so we now have a, a table of uh, whole positions on our uh, disk in degrees and minutes. So we drill the first hole at 0, 0. We drill the next hole at 9 degrees, 28 minutes. We drill the next hole at 18 degrees 57 minutes, drill the next hole at 28 degrees 25 minutes etc and I am drilling 38 holes so I will stop just there. So I stop at this point here after I've done my 38 holes. Uh, if we wanted to drill 47 holes for example we would put 47 in there and Excel would quickly calculate the values for 47 holes. So if we have this piece of paper next to us on the mill and drill the hole and cross each one out as we've drilled it so it don't get lost. Um, nice and easy. So I've actually done that so let's go and have a look and see how it went.